This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how to create this vector flip clock graphic using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial, you could look down at the bottom left-hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So I'll minimize this and we'll get started in Inkscape. And if you're familiar with Inkscape, you'll see on the left-hand side here that the, that the uh, traditional icons that are normally there are gone. I have instead created uh, some new icons for Inkscape and I've installed them and I'll put a link in the description if you'd like to download these uh, icons and use them yourself. I'll also have instructions on how to install these into Inkscape. So um, the first thing we're going to do in Inkscape is set our view to custom and then we'll zoom in at 100% and these windows won't be open when you first open Inkscape. But we're going to open them up by clicking on this button, the Align and Distribute menu. We'll click on that and that'll open up that one. We're going to want last selected chosen from that drop down. And then we'll go to the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu. And we'll have those two panels open for our use. So the first thing we're going to do is create a rectangle. So let's come over to the Squares and Rectangles tool. And let's click and drag on the canvas to create a, a rectangle that's um, narrower than it is uh, tall, so uh, slightly less wide than high, maybe about that width and height right there. And we're going to take this little node at the top and click and drag this down just to give these rounded edges. And then we'll convert that to a path by going to path, object to path. And then we'll go back to our, we'll go, back, we'll go to our select tool and we're going to take the opacity of this and drop this down about in half. And then I'm going to go back to the squares and rectangles tool and I'm going to create another rectangle, maybe about this size. Um, I'm going to come up here to get rid of the rounded corners. There's a little box icon up top in the toolbar. You click on that and that'll make the, uh, the corner sharp again. And I'm going to go to the select tool and I'm just going to alter this a little bit. I'm going to make this about this wide and this high. And then I'll hold um, shift on the keyboard and click on the uh, large black rectangle and I'll center that on the horizontal axis and click off of the graphic to deselect everything. So let's take this little rectangle, let's make this red for now, and then I'm going to hold control and click and drag this over to the left until the left side's overlapping the left edge of the black rectangle right there, just by a little bit. And then I'll right click this and go to duplicate. I'll hold control and click and drag this over to the right so it's in the same position. And then I'm gonna click and drag over both of those and unify them together by going to Path, Union. And I'll hold Shift in the keyboard and click on the large black rectangle. And I'm going to center that on the vertical and horizontal axis. And then go to Path, Difference. So we end up with this shape right here. And what I'm going to do with that shape is I'm going to right click that and go to Duplicate. And I'll turn that red and I'm going to lower that beneath the black circle with this button, lower selection one step. And I'm going to give that a red outline or a stroke as it's called by holding shift and clicking on the color red. And that'll put a little red outline around the outside of that. And we're gonna make that a little thicker. So let's come over to the stroke style tab and whatever numbers here, just erase that. I'm gonna try out uh, a 10 pixel stroke and see how that looks. Uh, still not big enough. I'm gonna try 20, see what that looks like. All right, that should work. And once you have it at about a width that looks about like that, let's go to path, stroke to path, and path, break apart, path, union. And we're going to do this one more time. We're going to go to edit, duplicate, and we're gonna turn this duplicated copy green. And then we're going to send that to the bottom, lower selection to the bottom and then give that a green outline by holding shift and clicking on the color green. Only this outline is going to be a lot thinner. I'm going to go with maybe eight for this one. Yeah, eight's pretty good. And then we'll go to path, stroke to path, path, break apart, path, union. Now let's grab the, uh, the zoom tool, the little magnifying glass, and let's click and drag over the left hand side to zoom in over here on this left hand little chunk that's missing. And uh, I'm going to go to the Bezier pen, which is this tool right here. You can just press B on the keyboard to get the Bezier pen. And I'll turn on the snap to cusp nodes. And I'm going to snap the cursor onto this corner and click. Snap it onto that corner and click. And then I'm going to bring this line through the graphic like this.
going all the way through the graphic and then connect it back to the starting point so we end up with that right there and then I'm going to shift over to the other side and do the same thing and to shift over I'm just going to press down on the mouse wheel and move the mouse to pan the page over I'm going to do the same thing start at the corner and then at this corner go through the graphic and back to the starting point and then we could press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100 percent and I'm going to go back to the select tool and hold shift in the keyboard and click on that other shape we just drew so we have them both selected and let's go to path union and then we're going to click on that green rectangle on the background you might have to zoom in a little bit to uh, be able to grab it I'm just going to hold control and roll up on the mouse wheel to zoom in and I'm going to click on that and you'll know you'll have the green one selected when you see the little green stripe in the toolbar down here if you see the red stripe that means you don't have it selected you have the wrong one we want the green one selected and with that selected I'm going to hold shift and click on those two shapes that we just drew that are now unified together and go to path union and then press one on the keyboard to zoom back out and I'm going to duplicate that by going to edit duplicate and I'm going to turn that one blue I'm going to send that to the bottom with this button right here lower selection to the bottom and then hold shift and click on the color blue to give it a blue outline and I believe um, same thickness that we used for the green one that should work and once you do that let's go to path stroke to path path break apart path union and once we've done that we can click and drag over this entire thing and let's bring the opacity all the way up so we end up with something like this right here and click off of the graphic to deselect everything now let's zoom into this left hand side right here by holding control and rolling up on the mouse wheel and I'm gonna grab the Bezier, pen, uh, Bezier pen by pressing B on the keyboard and I'm gonna snap the cursor onto this corner and click and then snap it onto that corner click snap it onto this corner click and then onto that corner click and put it on this corner right here click and I'm gonna turn that black and I'm gonna turn off the outline by holding shift and clicking on the X and we'll go back to the select tool and I'm going to right click this and go to duplicate and I'm going to press one on the keyboard to zoom back out and I'm just gonna take this square and snap it onto the corner over there so we have them both set up over here and then let's zoom back in you could press you could also press plus and minus on the keyboard to zoom in and out I'm going to click on this green object and I'm going to turn that black. So make the green object black. Then let's press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back out. Now let's click on this big black rectangle in the center here. And we're going to make this, uh, I'd say, we're going to make this 90% gray. If you hover your cursor over the color, it'll show you. It's the first one next to the color black. So 90% gray. And we're going to give this a linear gradient so let's come over to the fill tab and let's click on this little box that says linear gradient and we're gonna get our gradient tool by pressing G on the keyboard and once you do that these little gradient handles should show up and we're gonna click on this one right here on the right and we're gonna come over to this toolbar over here we're gonna take the opacity and bring that all the way up and under the HSL tab we're gonna take the L column and just slide this to the right make this a little lighter and then I'm going to take this stop and put this, click and drag this up here. And then I'll hold control and I'll take this stop and just bring this straight down. And I'm actually going to click on this one and make this one a little lighter actually. Maybe, um, maybe like 84, that should do the trick. And then um, let's click on the red object behind it. And once you have that selected, you know you'll have it selected when you see the red stripe in the lower left hand side. And I'm going to give that a linear gradient as well. And from this drop down, I'm just going to go ahead and pick the same gradient we just created. Only this time I'm going to put the dark, the dark stop up top here. And I'll take the lighter stop and I'll hold control and click and drag this down to here. Down on the bottom. Okay, so let's go back to the select tool. Click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And let's zoom in on this left hand side again. I'm just going to press plus on the keyboard to zoom in pressing down on the mouse wheel and moving the mouse to pan the page around and let's take this little uh, black rectangle and let's right click that and go to duplicate and let's just make that a shade of gray maybe um, maybe 40 percent gray 50 uh, 40 should be good and then I'm gonna hold control and I'm gonna grab this arrow on the right 
and I'm going to click and drag that inwards about this far. And then I'll let go of control, let go of the click, and then I'll just take this side and just bring this out a little bit so that it looks like it's consistent. The black padding around that thing needs to look consistent, somewhat consistent. And we're going to give this a linear gradient as well. By le so let's go um, click on the linear gradient tool. And let's press G on the keyboard to get our, our uh, gradient tool. And I'm going to put this, um, this lighter stop up top. And I'm going to put this darker one at the bottom, or the lighter one at the bottom and the darker one up top. And let's click on this first stop, and we're going to take the opacity and bring that all the way up. And let's double click on that blue line right here to create a stop right there. And then I'll double click on the blue line right here to create another stop right there. And I'm going to take this stop here, and I'm going to make that white. I'm just going to bring that all the way to the right, the L column all the way to the right. And then I'll take this stop beneath it, and I'll make that... I'll bring that to the left, maybe almost, not quite black, almost black, maybe like that. And I'm just gonna take this top stop, I'm gonna hold control, I'm just gonna click and drag that down a little bit. And then I'll take the, the bottom one, hold control and bring that up a little bit. And that should do the trick. So we'll go back to the select tool and let's take this and right click it and go to duplicate and hold shift and click on this object right there and let's align the right edges. Click on the button that says align right edges. And then we can press one to zoom back out and we'll see what we pretty much did was we took that and we put it up against there. Um, let me see if I did that right. Yeah, I did, okay. So that's, what we, that's where we're at right now. And the next step for us is to create, a little rec, create another rectangle. So let's come to the squares and rectangles tool again. And let's just click and drag it across to make a little rectangle, maybe like that, going across the graphic. And I'm going to go to the Select tool. I'm going to hold Shift and click on the graphic in the center there. Let's center that on the vertical and horizontal axis and click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And then let's click on just this graphic. And let's lower this a few steps. Let's go to the lower selection one step. We're going to click that once, twice. Um, let me zoom in and see. Now we're going to lower that a few more times. One, two. So four times in total, we lowered that. We lowered that four steps in total. And I'm going to make that one black as well. And I'll give this a linear gradient with this button right here. And let's go to our gradient tool by click, uh, pressing G on the keyboard. And I'm going to click on this tool right, on this node right there. Bring the opacity all the way up. And make this one gray about... We'll try out about 122 in the L column and see how that looks. And then I'm just going to take this gray stop and put this towards the bottom. And I'll take this black stop, put this towards the top. And I'm going to hold control when I get up here so it goes straight up and down. Let me zoom in a little bit. You can press plus and minus on the keyboard to zoom out. Do that. Maybe put that like that. And let me press 1 on the keyboard to zoom out and see how that looks. Uh, all right, that's pretty good. We can go back to our select tool and then click... Oops, click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a digit in here. So let's come to the text tool. And then let's just click on the canvas. And I'm just going to write, um, I'm just going to use the number zero. And you can choose a font with the text editor up here. Click on that. And the font I'm going to use is League Gothic. You could use any font you'd like if you have League Gothic installed. Go right ahead and use that if you want. Any font should work. Any heavy font that's pretty thick it should should work well. And I'm going to take the select tool, and then I'm going to hold shift and click on the box in the middle, and I'm going to center it on the vertical and horizontal axis to put that letter inside of there, and then click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And then I'm going to take this this letter, and I'm going to hold control and shift and click and drag it out until it's about about that big and I'm going to lower that one step so it goes beneath that little rectangle we just created and I'm gonna make this about 30% uh, gray yeah 30% gray that should work and I'm gonna give this a linear gradient up here and press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool and let's click on this stop on the right we'll bring the opacity all the way up and under the L column we'll slide that all the way to the right to make that white and we'll put the white part of the stop up here. Hold control and click and drag the, um, the other stop down there. 
and maybe bring that down a little bit. Bring that up. Let's say that looks pretty good. And let's go to our squares and rectangles tool. And let's just click and drag on the canvas to create a big rectangle covering the whole graphic. It's going to be white by default, but we could turn this um, black. We can go to the select tool. And let's go uh, lower selection to the bottom. Click on that button and put that beneath everything. I'm just going to position this right here for now. Uh, and this black rectangle in the background, I'm going to give this the same gradient that this object uses right here. So with that selected, I'm going to click on the linear gradient. And I believe that was the first gradient we created. So I'm going to come down to the bottom one on the list. And I'll press G on the keyboard to get the uh, gradient tool. And I'll take the darker stop and put it up here. And I'll take the lighter stop and put it down here. And then I'm going to click on that blue shape in the background over there, but I'm going to zoom in in order to grab it. So I'm going to just press plus on the keyboard to zoom in a few times. And then I'm going to click on that blue object, and you'll know you have it selected when you see the blue stripe. And let's turn that white, and let me zoom out a little bit, and let's give that a linear gradient as well. And then we'll take this, this stop on the right and put this towards the middle about. And then we'll take this stop and just hold control and click and drag this down to about here. So it kind of creates the effect of somewhat of like a bevel against the surface there. And go back to the select tool, click off of the graphic to deselect everything. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit, see how this looks. And that's pretty much it. That's how you can create the, uh, the flip clock digit using Inkscape. Now let me show you how to create additional digits. I'm gonna click and drag over this whole thing. And I'm just gonna hold control and move this over to the left. And then I'm going to, with all of these selected, you want to have all of those selected. I'm going to right click that and go to duplicate. And I'll hold control and click and drag this over to the right. Click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And let's click on just the, uh, the, the number zero. And we'll go back to our text tool. And I'll just erase that and write a one. And I'll hold shift, click on that graphic, center it on the vertical and horizontal axis. And there you have it. You can go and create digits 0 through 9 or whatever you'd like using that technique. So that's how you can create some vector uh, flip clock digits using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.